Welcome back everybody here to your coverage of the Gigabyte Challenge. I am Toby1, your host for the English live stream, as we're going into game number two of our grand final to see who will take home 1,500 euro and who will take home 500 euro. That's right, we are in the grand final because of the massively long path these teams have to take to get here. It has been uh, well, you get a reward. It's 500 euro no matter what happens with this matchup because you're in the grand remaining. final. But we'll see who can take it right now. If your rares are on 4CL, I think you're looking pretty safe at the moment because you have won a hell of a lineup. Dire team bad. They they got so much talent in their lineup as well. I gotta give it give props to Team Alternate. They really played well in the last game. The problem was things just started to slip away for them. There were some really bad engagements that just didn't go right. And I think actually they got crushed. I know it's kinda Ten weird to say they got crushed by a rock, but tiny just moved, like Bamboo kept moving Five and giving no remaining. space to the Wisp, no space to the Vengeful Spirit, and then the the core started Reserve to fear as time. well, and that kind of like seemed to resound throughout the entire camp of uh, of of ALT. It's I I don't I don't know exactly what happened inside that camp, but all I know is from observing that they seem to be playing scared. So it's it's one of these games where Alternate need to just try and find. Their footing to come back into this game. The big battling up against a Weehard Gyro and another Vanscore Witch Doctor. This looks very, very similar to before, and that's the reason why the Earthshaker is getting a ban out right now. But there's still many other options they can go with, and they're going to remove the bounty. So, no hunting. Dire team pick. No invisible force to try and find you, unless they're going to pick up an ex-assassin. Skywrath Mage. Uh, Skywrath. Radiant team. Pick. Okay, this almost feels like an aggro tri lane. Then. Night Stalker. For Night Stalker for Force. Dire okay, team so you know the DK is going to be running the mid lane. So you can get away with running something like a Lager Night Stalker as your mid solo. Put your gyro, gyro on top, your Witch Doctor as well. Skywrath and Lashrak won't fight into that. Um, but if if they go for something like an SD and a Rubik, then this has to be an aggro tri lane. And they have to move as five at the start, get down nice position awards so they can see what's happening behind the towers and then Ten find pickoffs after pickoff. And with the Nature's Prophet, yeah, yeah, bring in extra Radiant support, more the merrier. Let him run on bottom lane. He's great for soaking up a lot of the rocket barrages from Gyrocopter. Not that terrific of keeping the Witch Doctor out, however, so that would be a problem I would see. Look, this is, uh. Yeah, it's nice. Shadow Fiend. Dire team bad. Okay. My mind is now pushing this into a fourth position Night Stalker. Not really feeling like Bamboo is the kind of guy that would take that Night Stalker to the offlane. It'll, it'll be a similar role as what happened before. Like, except Tiny had burst Ten damage, which worked nicely. Remaining. Night Stalker would have to wait until the mid game to do anything. Five seconds remaining. Now, of course, the L. <sighs> If they actually pick up a coddle right now, team I pick. think they actually win the game. <laughs> uh, it, it comes it comes back down to that same thing as before. Uh, you're basically able to play the split push game better, um, and you're also able to play the counter push game so well. I, I don't I don't know how you get up on the high ground. That's that's where my problem arrives. If four CL actually uh, play that, and then. Ten Team alternate attack remaining. then need to work out. Okay, do we go into the oh. radiant jungle and battle? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. This this has radiant to be. If this pick. isn't an aggro tri lane, I am going to weep. Put the DK in the mid. The prophet on the bottom, and Bane Skyrath will strike aggressively on top, and that might be another reason why Abaddon is the last one, uh, and that'll be played by EGM. So it's going to be a night stalker, sexy bamboo. I get to be wrong. That Abaddon's required to keep to keep it, the teammates alive when that initiation does arrive, and it will, and it'll come really, really strong from alternate attack. It's just if they have the confidence to do it or not. That's that might should be the bigger question. Do you have the confidence to fight into that? Do you actually have the confidence to fight just just the team in general? I know uh, I was having a talk with uh, Blitz about this, in fact, with uh, Burden United when they were here. And uh, you go into a game up against up against a team like VG Gaming, and then you try and say, okay, how is this team going to function? Like, 
are they going to come in and just go YOLO kind of style? Uh, or do you have your heads up going, like, it's, it's YOLO thinking you can win, or YOLO thinking, uh, just knowing you're going to lose. And um, it creates such a different environment when you go for the, for the, for the battles. It can, it can mean the difference between a one second hesitation of, do I go in or not? Should I ask the question of my team if I should go in or not? Do I feel like I'm going to lose this anyway, so I then just go for things which will, I'll never win? Like, yeah. Alright, so top, Sexy Bamboo, very quickly moving up. He's got Boots as well as uh, Abaddon right behind him. So they're going to try and run a dual offlane with the Night Stalker as well as EGM Abaddon. Sexy Bamboo is going to cop a little bit of harassment here, but... Let's try. Even if he gets a stun, they just turn around and put the shield up. While on bottom lane, you're gonna have Weehar as well as Vanscore, the uh, Witch Doctor. Oh, first blood spilt. Uh, Witch Doctor as well as Gyrocopter. Uh, they'll be going against the off lane Exotic Dio, who is Nature's Prophet. In the walls, the mid lane is Wagamama's SF. He'll be going head to head with Luffy's DK. A little bit of extra help with the Bane around. The Supreme onto the Lashrak, so we're going to call a Shrak on the top. They're switching up the lanes as well by putting Luffy the into the mid. Begins. And then Nisha helping out. So Bamboo, trying to contest for it. Yeah, she got it. Yeah, she got the bounty rings. They just took both the bounties. The SF got the one on the bottom, and uh, ATN lose the one on the top. And run. Really surprising that something like that can happen. What is it doing with Strian? Alright, so he's actually gonna... Okay, the commitment the commitment for levels is high. All he's searching for is levels with this. Try to get underneath the tower. And that's why Weeha's trying to pull his wave up fast enough. So yeah, he actually managed to drag the aggro back down again. It actually helps him because it isolates one of the creeps and allows him to find the denies. And forces Exotic Deer to come a little bit further down than he really intended on doing so. How long has it been since I've seen something like this? Wait, how long has it been since I've even seen that? Waga! What is this? Okay, the Shadow Race makes sense when you have Enfeeble on you. I think Waga has just basically assumed that there's no way he's going to get a last hit. Not with that level of damage. Enfeeble just cripples you completely. So the only way you're going to get farmed is with Raid! <laughs> oh! Waga had a grand total of 12 points of damage outside the Razors, but because he went for the presence of the Dark Lord, he took away the extra armor that the Dragon Knight got from his Dragon Blood. It's three armor, and would you believe it? It's three armor reduction. So Dragon Knight didn't have that bonus armor he was hoping for, and Waga just it wasn't even that actually. It's just, he just raised him to death. It's a level one raise kill. This is not going to go well. This is not going to go well. <laughs> nice dog is forced out the top lane. This is the, this is the big upside for ATN though. If we look at their upsides, it's the fact that up on top lane, okay, EGM, EGM. Uh, yeah. Nisha. He's gonna live. Nah. A ATN's finding kills, they're finding, they're finding farm over on, over on the track. And really just great lane, lane dominance. That's the outside for him. They're still gonna be so careful about this SF now. Like, when you get a, a solo first blood like that, you're three levels behind. What's actually a little bit more damaging is the fact that these razors now right. But the funny thing is though, Waga still has the massive problem of fighting CS. Now he's about to raise right now, and Luffy is still in range. He's got to see this coming, and back up in time. Like Waga is prepping the wave and not even caring about the position of the DK, because he knows DK can't do anything to him. In fact, DK. Okay, so, so maybe that's why Luffy doesn't care as well. He, bought, he got himself a regen. Uh, but you've you've only now just skilled up your dragon tail. You're level four. Two, two points up and breathe fire and dragon blood, that's fine. But you get no kill potential up against Waga. And that's that's what he's looking at. Alright, Waga. Well that's one race. Two race. Three race. 
you're a level behind, you can't come that close to him. This just doesn't work. Now the Nightmare are up on top, Prophet's gonna TP in. Sexy Bamboo, who's the target? When you shield up Sexy Bamboo, we can survive. That's the reason why they switched it, but then again, when you bring four heroes like that, you're not gonna survive. Still cannot believe how hard Waga is outlaned, uh, Luffy. And then he can just move into the jungle, flash farm if he wants to. What, what kind of stacks do we have here? We got a double and we just got a normal. But the nice dog is gonna arrive. Sexy Bamboo. I wonder if he really needs to force this. The Diary of an Observer Ward is watching him though. Peace. Just up here. They're seeing it all. But there's more support coming in which Luffy won't know. And that's a haste during Witch Doctor. Now, Paralyzing Cards can slow him down. And that'll allow for the Void. One raise, two raises, and... Oh wow, really Skywrath? He's 4 HP from death. Look at that. Look at that. Arrgh. That shield shall not protect you. Yep. So Luffy's dead. There's nothing that can stop that. But at least they're pushing on top lane. Uh, Edict worth firing off right now. I think they're actually waiting for the fortification before he does it. And yeah, in fact, that's exactly what they're waiting for as well. So Supreme. Lost the game of chicken. But the tier 1 tower is still going to drop. Van scores the neighborhood. And uh, actually coming a little bit too close. Not going to achieve anything. Bamboo's too low on life. Unless Supreme and Exotic Deer overstay their welcome here, which... Okay, not when that happens. Attack. Bamboo just used Void to farm. So yeah, that's not going to change anything. Look, there's Bush coming down the bottom. What does he look... I had to be a misclick. I had to be a misclick. Unless he's... Okay, maybe it, maybe it wasn't. He was worried about some kind of rotation, like a witch doctor coming in from the side. And he's right about it, because Vanskull is now on the way in here. And the Sprout would have let him see that. But he could have also just summoned some Treants and sent one of his Treants over to the side. That's also a possibility. Call down from Weeha, Rocket Barrage doing some work. Nisha gonna get hurt by this now Vanskull. The paralyzing cast is two isolated heroes, and it actually bounced back down. Weeha gets himself a double kill, and the deer is trapped in the corner. Ah, oh, Bambi run. We are right behind him. Can turn on the fly cannon start to do the chip damage, but there's no point to it. He's got a salve to use. Face boost to get out. Abaddon's killing off for Shrike underneath the tier 1 tower in the top lane. And We are coming back for more. He's got a rocket barrage off cooldown. But who's low enough? Deer's underneath the tower, but that's it. He will need to find more mana regeneration on uh, on this gyro. Like the ring of Basilius isn't enough. And we've hit night time, hence uh Bamboo's a lot happier, the wings open up. He can also afford up his full urn now. Well, actually no, he's just short. We are having a terrific time. Dragon Knight, not even level 6 yet. Three deaths to his name. SF, well, let's actually just look at the net worth with these kills. 4.2k. 4.2k. Treads, full ring of Aquila. Mopping up creep waves in his stride. Dyer's middle tower is under attack. Looks well, like they're going to take out that tier 1 Dyer's tower in the mid as well. Fortified. Fortification, but this won't stop. But Prophet's TPing in. Dragonite does have his level 6 now, so he's got the longer range Dragon Tail stun. But Waga triggers Invis rune. He doesn't have the ultimate. He put 4 points up into, into the raises, but takes the high ground position, gives them the extra vision so they know what they're up against. Sees Prophet around the corner as well. Dyer's middle tower and he's got a choice. Does he go for this? Wish Doctor's moving up and, uh, well, okay. One race is enough. Dragon Tail stun, but you've got EGM sitting right behind him. That stun will never last, and Waga with the long range race finds himself another kill. That's four on the board now with a void. At least it's a seal, but the physical damage from Waga is just through the roof. So it's a triple kill for him. Well, there's two of these little trains with two rays. It's not the most mana efficiency S Waga's ever got. Radiant but he's 501 with 5300 net worth on this Shadow Fiend at the moment. Just a crushing performance. We are in the meantime is also having a great time on bottom. He's the second highest net worth on the field. Now picks himself up some live steal, so man moding these fights is a lot is a lot easier for him now. 
Yeah, that probably would be too, but the Dragonite's coming down to bottle up the, D the DD rune. No one from 4CL is going to get there in time, so Luffy. Small advantage. Use the smoke and run up. Maybe they can catch out Weeha. At the same time, EGM's just around the corner from him. Got where am I going with that camera? So Bane. The track. The track again for this. Okay, th this, this is one of the worst times when you can build into something like a Bloodstone. Because the enemy team is rampaging. The SF's in a position Radiant right now where he can probably kill you off left, right, attack. and center. You need to have some level of control, disable, or initiation. And there's one item which does it all for me, which works perfectly on the track, and that's a Yule Scepter. Same way as the Lena does it. Walk in, Yules, Split Earth, Edict, Lightning. That's obviously not the same way Lena does it, because it's the track abilities. But it gives time for them, Wrath of Nature, to kick in, or Skyrath to arrive with with his Mystic Flare, if he can get to level 6. Like, this is the kind of stuff you're gonna need. Or else you'll just end up giving team fight after team fight over, or you get the Bloodstone and you'll be down to two charges in the matter of, matter of no time. And that's where my concern's coming in for this Latrac. Unless this point boost is meant to go into something else, but... Really. I'm just gonna do a double check, considering all the stuff the point boost it. No? <laughs> it's knocked a ring call that's behind it. I still hate that how that comes over the top. Um the bless her knocked a ring call. There's no way he's gonna get enough money to finish up knocked a ring call anytime soon. I don't think it makes a lot of sense for the little track either. Not over something like a bloodstone. Oh, looks like uh 4 is about to force the issue now. We how it comes in. So got that Abaddon shield up and running. EGM. I think he's walking around with something special on him. Because that animation is a little bit different. The cloak of the demonic vessel. Yeah. It's the, uh... It's the full alliance set for him. Middle lane. TP's in the way. Bambi wants to try and fight. Who's he going to avoid? Slows down the Bane to start with. Who's the first TP? Of course it's going to be Waga. Full mech done, so they're ready to have a, they're ha ready to have a full fight. One quick raise, takes out Exotic Deer's life. But Weeha, in range for the cooldown? Not really. He needs to be close, and he's the stun from Ben's gonna make that work. That's just not there. So instead, they can just look to push behind the tower. Radiance Bamboo, where the hell are you running? <laughs> where are you running? What are you looking for, son? The Bane? They don't Radiance see him. Bottom tower like, is in the position attack. he is currently, there is no vision of Bamboo. So he just walks in from the north. And then gets completely nuked. Saying, EGM, protect me. The cooldown will arrive. So will that die courier for some unknown reason. Uh, it's delivering wards out to Nisha. And then someone grabbed and sent it all the way back again. So they get a kill over on the Sky Red Mage. But really, it's just lame dominance now they're establishing. And they also found an ancient stack of... Oh, wow, that's... Money. So much money. Waga, as well as Weeha, is battling for every single last hit. Waga's gonna need some better mana regeneration than what he's got if he's gonna run a mech. He doesn't have mana to support it. That's that's kind of the problem whenever you run like a, like a mech on any core hero. It just costs so much. 225 mana. You're burning a third of your mana pool just to have the mech, tra mech charge. And for the same amount of mana, you can cast three raids worth of damage. So you think about it, so you can either heal up a crap ton, or you can dish out damage just shy of a thousand. That's, that's what you sacrifice. Unless you've got both. And normally in a team fight, you get two sets of raises off. Especially in team fights that normally have like heroes like DK, for example, who are very tanky. In these kind of fights with the other heroes from ATN, it'll it'll only be one set. Skywrath will die way too quickly. They're actually gonna smoke up. Prophet TP's into the trees. They see him there. He sprouts up and uh, well, they can't see into that. The Death Wall gives him the vision. They just Prophet goes down very quickly. The nightmare's over on Abaddon, so they couldn't just chase. So just break the nightmare again. Put the shield on Bamboo and go a running. Luffy. Uh, too close towards the tower. 
You've just lost your Nature's Prophet, you've lost your support. EGM's also got his ulti up, so he actually regenerates with all the damage they're doing to him. And Bamboo keeps running. Looking for the Void over on Nisha. Uh, almost successfully jukes it around the tree lines, but the Urn Charge one more attack would be enough. The Nightmare's there to potentially deny him. And Bamboo actually took it off to avoid the split Earth from Supreme that was coming in, and Bamboo giving up his life. Remember what I said before about him being the over-aggressive type? That's exactly what he is. And he just fed a large amount of experience over. While he's not that high up on the net worth, he still found a fair amount as far as levels go. Not as anywhere near as much as like a kill on a shadow feed would be, but still, it's something. So four CL. I think they're just having a little bit of fun now. And the same thing, same time for ATM. Like you, you can't just let your brain walk out the door when you're playing this game. Use it as practice. A lot of a lot of times, Gigabyte Challenge is all about just having that opportunity to go up against players, which you'll probably never be able to. So you get you get the experience of going up against someone good. I know. Uh, see, I, I've all, I've always felt that playing up against someone even better than myself, it's going to show where my weaknesses are. At the same time, it could be absolutely spirit crushing, but. It can show where my weaknesses are. And that's something which ATN should be looking at. Uh, Nightmare. Oh, yep. that's the buy time. Exotic Deer's on his way, but they can't kill Weeha. He's worried about the initiation. So let's the cooldown go. But they found somebody else. Skywrath Mage, Void, but they got enough damage to get the kill before he can finish the TP. At least it was smart there if Nisha to realize that, uh, the one thing that could stun him up was already used. But now Luffy's on in trouble. Or well, maybe not. Nightmare's up. No, he's in trouble. The shield breaks out. Luffy's on the run. That's two of the long range raids which have already connected. Really, they're just hunting for kill after kill. Lol, sentry board. Right on top of it. Radiant's top tower is under attack. They have sentries of their own. Nope. Radiant's middle tower has been denied. Radiant's top tower is under attack. So, Force CL should really be looking to try and force, like, I'm not going to say force it, but push it. Like, I know they kind of want Roshan at the same time. Wow, Prof, really? Vance goal, sealed up. The shield's still there from EGM. He can throw out the paralyzing cask, and there's too many heroes too close by. Waka throws out the Wreck of Assault, and then into the Death Ward. Exotic Deer actually switched over from the targets. Not Fluffy did that one on purpose, but either way, EGM's right behind him. No ulti available for this Abaddon, but it may not matter. Into the Pulse Nova with the shield, just wants it to trigger. Waga, nah, he's up on the high ground, uh, that TPing DK. Skyrest not too healthy either, but he managed to get himself back to base. ATN's been doing pretty good to get out of these fights, but only a couple of the casualties. But at the same time, they're also taking fights where it's a little... Like, they're trying to force the issue. You can't blame them, because you're at a point in the game where if you don't try and force something, if you don't make something out of nothing, you're probably going to have nothing anyway. So they're making 4CL a little bit more timid about coming out of them. So 4CL just going to go for Rosham. Interesting choice of time to go for it. Most of the ultis are down at the moment. Including darkness. So you're, you're doing this during night time. I suppose what do you really think is going to stop you? What a hell of a lot, Prophet. Wow, is he actually TPing directly in? Yeah, he was. <laughs> he's, he's thinking about it. Now they come in. Where's your cooldown? Turn the flag hand. The damage just spills out. I think that's it. One last hurrah. One for the road. Uh, that is GG. The winners of Gigabyte Challenge number 15 will be 4CNL. Congratulations to the boys, but also congratulations. It goes to ATN. They did get themselves to the Grand Final, so team will turn it. Now we take home 500 euro. We'll get to see uh, hopefully more from these guys in the future. There's more cups coming up. As far as joined out the Gigabyte Challenge, one of these things we do consistently, but I believe you still have time if you're down in Southeast Asia. I know you're probably asleep if you're down in Southeast Asia. Uh, to sign up for the Corsair Gaming Arena, which will also be coming up. And uh, we'll have more Gigabyte Challenges, more, uh, more cups for you guys at home to compete in. I hope you had a great time watching it. I know I had some good fun casting tonight. And uh, thanks a lot. Thanks a lot for watching. See you next time.